Hello, everybody. I'm Dr. Steve Edelman. I got my good friend and colleague, Jeremy Pettis, and the other good friend and colleague, Dr. Bill Polonsky. And today we're going to talk about the diabetes etiquette. Bill, what made you come up with a diabetes etiquette card years and years ago? Well, thanks, Steve. So diabetes etiquette was something that I made up with my colleague, uh, Susan Guzman, at the Behavioral Diabetes Institute. And it really arose in a pretty simple way because we were talking to so many people with type 1 and type 2 diabetes. And we were asking them what drives them crazy. And one of the things that kept coming up over and over again was all the stupid and annoying things that they were hearing from other usually nice people who meant well, but were saying just crazy things. And they didn't know what to do. Like, I, I just, you know, it's from a parent, it's from a, a brother, a sister. I mean, I can't punch them. What do I do? And we said, wouldn't it be nice if we could make up this very simple little card that you could hand to people when they say something stupid and just say, oh, you must not know the rules about how to behave. <laughs> so that's where we came up with the idea of diabetes etiquette and the diabetes etiquette card as to hopefully something funny that would open up a conversation between the individual with diabetes and their loved ones. It's important to remember diabetes etiquette, as we developed it, is for people who don't have diabetes. Type 3s. Type 3s, exactly. Yeah. yeah, so this is important because if you have diabetes, you want these etiquette rules to teach your loved ones. And if you don't have diabetes and you're on your husband's or wife's back all the time, these are for you. And Jeremy's going to go through yep. the top 10. Jeremy. Hot off the press. I feel like David Letterman. These are 10 things that Bill put together. Five don'ts and five do's. So we'll just go through them one at a time. So number one, this is for somebody without diabetes. Advice for them. Etiquette, if you will. Don't offer unsolicited advice about my eating or other aspects of diabetes. Now, you guys probably all know what this looks like, but just to give you an idea, we, you know, this actually happened to one of us the other day and we have a clip about it. So why don't you roll it, Eric? Eric, it's my turn to order lunch for the office. So I'm actually really excited about this new place because they have this awesome burrito that I'm going to get. Um, do you feel like maybe that is a little bit too high carb for you, you know, with your diabetes and everything? Like maybe you, maybe you should get a salad or something. I mean, I, I guess I could get a salad. Yeah. All right, well, what do you want? Uh, yeah, the burrito sounds good. I'll have the burrito. So, Bill, tell us about that, number one. Well, it's something I'm sure you guys understand immediately, and it's number one for a good reason. It's the, probably the most major thing that's so annoying, right? When someone says to you, oh, perhaps you shouldn't be eating that, or maybe you should check your blood sugars again, or whatever it might be. Oftentimes, they're well-intentioned, but, you know, it can just be annoying when you didn't ask for it. Mm -hmm. We don't need anybody nagging you. Especially around the holidays. You uh, know, big meals, big groups, don't eat that. You know, you have diabetes, you shouldn't be drinking that. It can really drive people crazy. Cool. So, you know, we don't want to be just a bunch of naysayers, things you don't do. So, what can you do? So, number two, right here. Do <laughs> realize and appreciate that diabetes is hard work. Bill, what would that look like? hard to say what it would look like, but what we want the person who doesn't have diabetes to appreciate is something that, again, that you guys know, that diabetes is a job, right? There's no pay, no vacations, you get to do it forever. And I think for loved ones, it's sometimes easy to not notice that mm -hmm. and to just be able to be respectful and to appreciate that. And again, all of these etiquette points are just to open up a conversation. Your loved one may not do it perfectly, but you should at least be talking about it. There's not enough time for today to go through all the things us folks with diabetes have to think about from sun up to sun down and even overnight, all the decisions to try to keep our blood sugars in a good range. It's exhausting sometimes. And I think an important thing about this one, do realize and appreciate, doesn't mean fixing it. Doesn't mean solving the problem, just, man, that must be tough for you. Stop. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> that is so key and just kind of empathizing without necessarily trying to offer solutions. Exactly. Um, okay. So number three, I got my list right in front of me. I don't know if you guys know this. So number three, <laughs> don't tell me horror stories about your grandmother or other people with diabetes you have heard about. So Again, this is a very common thing, and we actually have a clip of something that, again, you might kind of be familiar to. to, relate to. Thank you, Steve. So, Eric, go ahead and roll that for us. Hey, man, what you looking at? Hey, Eric. I'm actually just looking at my lab results. My kidney function's a little off. It has me worried. Oh, man. Yeah, you know, that's, uh, that's how it happened with my grandma. You know, she had diabetes one day, kidney functions are off. Next day, dead. What? That sounds awful. Tell that to my grandma.
Oh. I mean, I can't tell you how many times something like this has happened to me. And even when people know I'm an endocrinologist, they just offer these like stories, which just blows my mind. Super unhelpful. So Bill, anything to say about that? I think, I'm sure your experience uh, makes sense with this. It's almost always well-intentioned, right? It's like, oh, what a wonderful coincidence. Mm -hmm. And now we have something in common. I can share <laughs> yeah. this with you. And there's just, it's they don't realize how just annoying that can be. Mm -hmm. So it's just something to consider. We want people to understand. That just aware just not it. helpful. That's all. So I do hope that people are watching this together with their loved one and kind of nudging each other exactly. as they're hearing these things. Okay. Wrestling match. So what's something you can do? Well, number four. Do offer to join me in making healthy lifestyle changes. So that one might be a little tricky, like Bill. So how do you join in with somebody without saying that you should do this? Right. Well, I think uh, you've kind of said it. You know, there's a big difference between saying you need to start eating better. Or, Why don't you exercise more? Look at you. You have diabetes. And saying, actually, you know, a diabetes friendly way of eating is a healthy way of eating. So why don't we as a family simply adopt. Let's all eat approaches. cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> and birdseed, you know. And bird seed, yeah. Or if I'm thinking physical activity would be good for you, probably good for me as well. Mm -hmm. So what can I do, not just to say, yeah, why don't you do that, but how can I join with you and we can do some how stuff together. How can we together. do it? Yeah. That's such a great suggestion. Yeah. yeah. All right, number five. Don't look so horrified when I check my blood sugars or give myself an injection, any of my diabetes tests. So this, again, happens all the time you know like thankfully with cgms and pumps it's a little bit more discreet but a lot of people you know using meters blood on the table you know taking out an injection yeah. you know people just giving a look like you're doing drugs you know like stuff like that it's it's a frezza yeah oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> um so that one can be like it, it can really kind of hurt people's feelings with diabetes of feeling like they're the social pariah for doing things that they're just trying to do to keep themselves yeah. healthy. Yeah. It's this weird stigma, right? It's mm -hmm. like, ew, you're really unusual and weird, aren't you? And you shouldn't be doing that. Can't you go in the bathroom and do that or go somewhere else when it's, um, I can understand that point of view, but you know, chill out. It's, it's okay. All right. So do ask how you might be helpful. And I like that one again, because it's not like, you know, I should, you should do this or like kind of putting on the other person. How can I help? You know, I know I don't know everything about diabetes, but when your blood sugar is low, it scares me. Like, what can I do? I think that's a great way of framing it. Like, how can I be helpful? Yeah. Let me, let me actually rephrase it because in many ways that's the most important one. Because when you, when I've had the chance to meet with lots and lots of uh, caregivers and loved ones, they're trying to help so much. And how they do it is they tend to mind read like, oh, you know, Steve's not doing so well with his diabetes. I know what he needs. And so they'll try to do different things. If you want to be helpful, just ask how you can be mm -hmm. helpful. Um, stop the mind reading and presume that you may not know the best maneuver, the best way of being supportive. Um, so why not have a conversation about it? Mm -hmm. People make assumptions. And so many, many times it comes from a place of love, but sometimes it's completely wrong. Yeah. It's, a, it's called communication. And I always mm -hmm. tell people, you know, have these conversations when it's not like a code red kind of situation. It's not, you know, blood sugars are plummeting and, you know, 40 and alarms are going off exactly. or, you know, you can't find your medications or whatever. It's actually taking a moment of, you know, in these different instances with diabetes, whether it's around food or exercise or medications or low blood sugars, how can that person be helpful? I think it's just a great way to kind of get to know each other also about, you know, this is somebody that I care about. It's living with this this disease that sucks a lot of the time and like you just want to help. So how can I do that? You know, well put. for your partner, you know, got to know where the peanut butter is mm -hmm, when you get exactly. low <laughs> and the big old spoon. And you know, it's funny because, you know, I've had people ask me that, how can I be helpful? And it's, it takes you a second to think about it. Yeah. What actually would be helpful? What would I want? I know what I don't like, but what would it be like to be, you know, to help that person be proactive? I think exactly. Even the person with diabetes doesn't stop sometimes to think about that. Yeah. And you and I really don't want that much help. I know that from talking to you, but sometimes we would like a little well, you help. you just got me an iced coffee. It took you a little too long to make it, but it was still pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're moving right along. So that was number six. Um, so number seven, it says, don't offer thoughtless reassurances. You might be wondering, well, what does that look like? Well, I'm glad you're wondering because we have a clip of exactly this. Roll it. Hey man, what's up? You look kind of down. Yeah, I just 
To be honest, it's been a tough day with diabetes. I mean, first was the whole lunch thing. <laughs> yeah, that burrito was really good. Yeah. Um, and then my kidney function stuff. So diabetes is like, I don't know, just winning today, you know? I hey mean, I hear you. Know, it is really tough. But, you know, think of it this way. At least you don't have cancer. Eric, that is extremely unhelpful. Whatever, man. I'm just trying to help. Eric. So, Bill, for me, here's just another situation of somebody who wants to be helpful, but they probably just don't know what to do with this information. You know, like you learn that somebody has this disease that, of course, they don't want to have, and you want to make them feel better, but it comes off as trite and kind of condescending. Um, Pollyanne. Yeah, like, so how would you, how could somebody rephrase that? Or I, I don't know. Yeah, I think trite is the right word. Mm -hmm. And again, it's another, uh, uh, you know, representation of someone who's mind reading. They're saying, oh, I think I know it will be helpful. Mm -hmm. As opposed to just stepping back and saying, you know, I, I want to be reassuring. Or it's, I feel unclear about how to even talk to you when I hear something like that. It's like, I didn't know you had diabetes. I mean, it didn't even occur to me. And um, what is the best thing to say? Be interested. Be curious enough to simply ask yeah. as opposed to doing something that's so automatic. And, and for, if you have diabetes, remember, if someone is saying something like that to you, Please remind yourself, even though it's annoying, they probably mean well. They're mm -hmm. trying to be helpful, even though it's so freaking annoying. Right. Is it proper to let them know about the new data that people with diabetes now are living longer uh, than ever before thanks to technology and better drugs? Is that the right place? Or? Yeah, it could be. It could be. It's not a bad idea. Depending. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I think for me, this is, you know, as we're saying this, my blood sugar is going off. Thanks for not noticing, guys. Um, <laughs> high blood sugar, I'm okay. Um, for me, this is just one where people are just uncomfortable. Yes. You know, they found out that you have diabetes and they just kind of like want to make the situation yeah. better. Yeah. Which makes, like, reminds and me. They're uncomfortable. They're uncomfortable. That, you know, people have different kind of attitudes about their own uh, comfortability about talking about yeah. diabetes. Like, when we get in an Uber, Steve and I, you know, he's going off with the Uber driver about showing him his CGM and his pump and like, Always. you know, like founding <laughs> TCID and everything, which is fantastic. That just makes me like, just want to crawl into my like shell and die because I, I, I just, didn't know that. No, I just like, I don't like talking about it. You, you never know, like, told me that. I like doing this stuff, but when I meet somebody in the wild, like, you know, it's just not something I want to talk about. So you can have kind of power over your own decision to talk about it or not. Again, especially when it comes, I'm just thinking holidays, these big gatherings where people are all well-intentioned. You could give a, a, a stand up and give a speech. That might be what Steve did about like, well, you know, diabetes is getting better. I didn't do that. You know. <laughs> You're not going to be wearing the ask me about diabetes shirt. Yeah. And I might just set up, you know, beforehand, hey, let everybody know I have diabetes. It's fine. Like, you know, I'm like, I can eat these things, like whatever. There's different ways of doing it. That's but, exactly but you know, what Jeremy, it's a good point. Yeah. Everyone's different about how they want to announce that they have diabetes or not. Yeah. And that we have to respect that. All right. So exactly. don't offer thoughtless reinsurance. That was number seven. Number eight, do be supportive of my efforts for self-care. So tell us about that one, Bill. You know, the perfect example I could think of and put on my research hat is when we did a study and we asked people, did you share, do you share your data? Like on your CGM, you know, like, do you have anyone ever look at your, yeah, assuming you have a CGM, your uh, AGP report. I mean, do you ever share that with anybody? And what we found really made a difference is when loved ones reported that they um, uh, did something positive. Um, so it wasn't doing less of the negative stuff. It was saying something like, boy, you're really, well, this is a weird way to say, boy, you're really having a tough day. You know, hang in there. Or, boy, it sounds like you're having a great day. Congrats. I mean, just a sense that there's somebody out there rooting for you. Mm -hmm. Now, you may not know the best way to do that. You may need to ask, but it's those efforts to be um, supportive in that way. Does that make sense? Yeah. Jeremy, you're only 363 and going <laughs> oh, up. Stop. <laughs> I promise that this is only about, no, 163 yeah. straight across. Don't follow my blood sugars and shame me on, you know, live. National, this is national <laughs> television. <laughs> no, I think that's a good one, Bill. And again, when you're saying that, like, it comes to mind again that it's not about giving recommendations or solving the problem. Yeah, it's, yeah. you know, even if this person is not, you know, the self-care could be they started, you know, walking around the block or whatever. You know, that's fantastic. I know, like, this has been difficult for you, like, way to go. Yeah. And that might be hard for people to say, but trust me, that hits. Like, when you have diabetes and somebody notices and just says, good work. And if it's sincere. Yeah. That's important. Yeah. yeah I mean, if I had, as an example, if I had diabetes, I don't know what I can do all the things you do to try to keep yourself healthy, you know? 
more power yeah, to you. It's like, wow, thanks. Yeah. So I appreciate yeah. that. Okay. So number nine, don't peek at or comment on my blood glucose numbers without asking me first. So even though we just had a perfect example of Steve, <laughs> of what not to do, we actually have a clip of another even more dramatic example. Roll it, Eric. <laughs> Two hundred. That's it. Ah! So this one is just a classic. <laughs> you know, people being like, "Oh, like you know, you're high, you're low. Like you know, what what did you do like, yeah, that caused yeah. that? Or what are you going to do about it? Are you going to do this or that? It's just it's very intrusive, and um, it's personal to know what your blood sugars are. If my blood sugars are high or low. Guess who's the least happy about it? Me. I don't need somebody else like commenting on it, which is just going to piss me off. 100% of the time. And Bill said a million times, you know, it's just a number. It doesn't reflect on your personality. If you're a good diabetic or a bad diabetic, but to this day, yeah. my blood sugar is bad. I don't want anybody to know. Right. If it's good, I'm going, hey, check that out. <laughs> and that's just the way it is, even though we, yeah. we talk about it all the time. Yeah. And for those of you who don't have diabetes are listening to this and thinking, well, that doesn't, I'm not quite sure. I don't really understand why that's such a big issue. You know, imagine that you're weighing yourself on your bathroom scale every morning and some family member sort of hanging over, looking down. No, I do that naked. Comments. No way. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't want that. It's your numbers, and you're the one who gets to decide whether you want to share that with anyone, and that needs to be respected, and I think that's just, that's yeah. really the point. It's critically important. And I, there's something so unique about diabetes, like what you said, Steve, is that when your numbers are higher or low, you, you feel like mm -hmm. a failure, like you did something wrong, and that's so, again, unique yeah. to diabetes, it's not like, you know, you have pneumonia and it's a bad pneumonia. And someone's like, what did you do to get that bad pneumonia? So it's, there's something very internal about diabetes that is unique. So when you're commenting on somebody's high or low blood sugars, you're essentially commenting on them as a person, you know, that's how it feels like sometimes. Yeah, totally. Um, you grew up with that. The numbers are, are your report card. You're exactly. great. Are you good or bad? Have you succeeded or failed? And we're going to let you know, we're going to let you know and comment on that all the time. Enough already. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a big one. Well, the last one is a do. Thanks, Bill. I like the way you organized it. It's on a positive. So it says, do offer your love and encouragement. So we actually don't have a clip on this one. We thought we maybe we could do it live. So we do offer your love and encouragement. Steve, you're doing such an amazing job, and I love you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's Come on, gotta Bill. get Bill uh, out of it. Actually, let me uh, just get through I can't here. Get up. Uh, kind of oh, away. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> we tried. <laughs> okay. That's exactly how you do your number 10. Like, I, I just was kind of hug you, and then this guy kind of got in the way. Well, I felt like, I felt bad leaving came, him out. Like, I wanted to be know, a part of it. He was he, a load-bearing wall. <laughs> <laughs> I can offer my yeah. Love and reassurance. So anyways, um, oh, sorry. So if you want um, to get this information, it's on Bill's website. You can see the different things. You can actually print out little cards if you want. You can hand them out to people at work, a little bow on them, whatever you want to do. So Eric can put the information on the website. But tell us like a little bit about Behavioral Diabetes Institute, anything else you want to say as we close out? Sure. Well, again, the, you know, the etiquette cards really are a product not just of me, but my colleague Susan Guzman and all of our patients over the years who've taught us were the, some of the things that drove them crazy and what they wanted as solutions. So I think that's what's important. And um, we also have, you'll see on our website, a version for teenagers to give to their parents. And again, that doesn't mean parents need to follow all the rules with the teenagers, nor you need to follow all the rules on the original etiquette card. The purpose is to hopefully be a little funny and to open a conversation. That's what's important. Yes, Steve. I'd like to close with something that is important. Bill spoke at our very first TCOID face-to-face. 1995 and probably 80 what 90 percent of our conferences around the country it's got a zillion videos on our website is an integral part of tcoid and if you don't know who he is you're a loser <laughs> all right well thanks for tuning in everybody thanks bill appreciate this talk to you soon thanks guys <laughs>